Hey guys, Sam here from keycommerce.com. In this video, you're going to learn what is Google Merchant Center next, how it works, how to create an account, and then how to navigate the dashboard. You need to learn Google Merchant Center next in order to set up your Google Shopping campaigns and Performance Max campaigns. We do this every single month for our clients, optimizing their Google Shopping, their Performance Max campaigns, and generating thousands of dollars in sales for our clients. I'm going to guide you through Google Merchant Center Next in this video, let's go. Okay, what is Google Merchant Center Next? If we want to sell our products on Google Shopping and Performance Max, Google needs to know information about our store and our products. Every e-commerce store is different and all our products are organized in different ways. In order for Google to have all the data it needs, it requires every e-commerce store to set up a Google Merchant Center Next account. Your Google Shopping campaigns can't run unless you set up a Google Merchant Center account and it needs to be set up properly. Think of it as a gatekeeper for your Google Shopping ads. If your products are not approved in Google Merchant Center, they won't be shown in Google Shopping ads. Everything about your inventory, retail locations, promotions, and products are included in Google Merchant Center. Understanding how it works is crucial to getting more out of your campaigns, generating more sales and more profits. Okay, but what is Google Merchant Center next? Google Merchant Center next is the redesigned version of Google Merchant Center. Now I'm going to refer to the old Google Merchant Center as Google Merchant Center Classic and the new Merchant Center as Google Merchant Center next. In the new version, GMC next, Google has removed certain capabilities such as feed rules, supplemental feeds, and bulk editing in favor of keeping things simple. Now they may add these features back in the future, but for now, let's just cover what's happening right now. What they've added in GMC Next is a lot of reporting and automated recommendations. We'll review some of these in a few minutes. Now I'm going to walk you through how to set up your Google Merchant Center Next account. Go to google.com slash retail and click the get started button. Note, you'll need to have a Gmail or a Google based email account for this. It's a good idea to use the same email you've used for your Google ads and Google analytics accounts where possible. Next, you'll need to begin telling Google about your business. Here, they're making sure we're eligible to have an account by asking these questions. I'm going to say, yes, we do sell products online. Then enter the URL address for the store. And no, we don't have a physical store. Click continue. Google then takes one final opportunity to explain what Merchant Center does and that it's only for stores with products and not services. Let's continue to Merchant Center. Here we're asked for our business name. A lot of store owners get confused and put their legal or corporate name. No, enter the name that you advertise and do business as. This is important because it will be shown alongside your ads. Now we're finally cracked into the account interface. Note on this pop-up that they promise to add new features to Merchant Center next. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay on top of these features and how best to use them. Let's clear that and begin. Google has now provided us with a checklist that we must complete before we can start using shopping ads over in our Google Ads account. We complete this checklist in our other videos where we go deeper into doing this properly. I'll leave a link to those tutorials down below. But for the first two, they're really simple. Let's add our business address. Note that we cannot change the country since we set it earlier. There is no way to do this other than creating a whole new account. For the business address, do not put a PO box or a rented address that you only receive mail to. Google wants an address where you operate from. Don't worry, this address will not be published online. Let's save that and now we'll verify our phone number. Google suggests that this phone number be the same phone number you have published on your store's website. It's not necessary, but it's a faster way for Google to ensure it's a phone number connected to this business. Enter a phone number that you can verify right now, then choose your verification option. We'll complete this list in subsequent videos. So let's quickly cover GMC Next layout and interface. At the top right, you'll see a gear icon for our settings options. The first is data sources, which we'll explore more once we get to setting up our product feed. Just know that this is the section to manage your external connections to GMC Next from. Second from the top is people and access. This is where you add and manage who gets access to this account. You can assign those users different levels of access with admin having full control, standard having some control and performance and insights allowing only the reading of the reports. Next are apps and services, which we'll cover soon along with add-ons. After that is conversion settings. 
We haven't yet connected our conversion tracking from our Google Ads account, but we'll want to turn these two settings for auto tagging and numeric annotation. The first setting will enable you to see conversion metrics in your GMC dashboard. This can be useful as you start growing sales. The second setting simply allows Google to test sharing information about your store and your ads, such as indicating how popular it is. My team and I usually find it's a good idea to allow Google to test features like this. Finally, in the settings menu, we have general account options. Google does a good job at explaining what each option here is for, but I want to expand on the product protection setting. I recommend turning it on and leaving it at the 40% default. This means you will be alerted before anything can remove 40% or more of your products from GMC. Accidental deletion can be surprisingly easy to do, so this is a good measure to take. Now let's cover the basics of the left-hand navigation menu. Overview is simply what Google feels is the most important to greet you with when you sign into the account. It's a page where most users quickly skip over as most of the insights it offers are better shown elsewhere. Notifications are for anything that Google feels is pressing enough for an alert. Products is likely to be the section that you go to the most. Here you'll see a full list of all the products that have been entered into Merchant Center. The Needs Attention tab is very important. It's the list of products that Google has either issued a warning about or outright disapproved. Items with warnings can still show in your shopping ads, though they may be limited in eligibility. However, disapproved items must be fixed and approved before you can advertise them. I'll have a whole video dedicated to this process that you can get a ton of great advice from. The next tab is for sales tax, which is again a separate video coming up. I want to make sure that you get a full tutorial on getting this set up right. Automatic improvements is next. These settings are about giving Google permission to make adjustments to the product information without needing your manual input. I recommend this as Google can be much faster in seeing the required changes that we can as store owners. You can see that automatic updates by default are already permitted for pricing, availability, and product conditions. I'm going to leave these on. This other box covers automatic image improvements. This means that if your main product image has something on it like writing or a logo, Google's system will automatically remove it. Doing that will keep your image from getting disapproved and therefore keep your product in your shopping ads campaign. Finally, we have Product Studio. It's an AI tool where you can try to improve your product pages. My team and I have played around with it, but have found it to be a bit more of a distraction than something that can directly help profitability and growth. I do urge you to play around with it, but take care not to spend too much time on it until they improve this tool a lot more. Next on the left-hand side is shipping and returns. These policies are important to get right, so I actually have a full video on how to set up your shipping and returns. I'll leave a link down below. In business info, we can edit our business details. Notice that we can add more information than what we are originally asked during setup, including customer service information, business identity attributes, and our store's social media profiles. The stores tab is for physical store locations. It's here that you would add the Google business profile for each location you have. And that will enable you to show ads that are local to shoppers who may want to pick up items in store. And countries is of course for selecting where your ads can appear. Store quality is a section we'll review once campaigns have been running a bit. It's basically Google's scorecard for our store as it relates to the online stores we're competing with. If Google feels that we're a top quality score, it may display a badge that shows this on our ads. This is a section we'll periodically return to as our account grows and develops. We wanna make sure that we're competitive on aspects like shipping and that we're presenting our products well, according to Google. Now, we go to the marketing section on the left menu with free listings. There's nothing you need to set up here because in GMC Next, these are turned on by default. Free listings are where Google can show your product in shopping search results and they're treated as organic which is another way to say that we're not paying per click for these ads and therefore free to you as an advertiser. Of course, paid ads get much more prominence than free listings, but that's still good to have up and running. We're going to skip over ad campaign section because it's far too basic as an access point for managing our campaigns. And speaking of basic, the next two menu links under the analytics section are also somewhat basic. We can get better reports for analytics elsewhere. For summary, we see a simple click report and a trends insight report. I wouldn't call these reports useless, but they are small elements of a much larger picture. And finally, we have the products section. Here's where Google tries to give you valuable insights into how your products are trending. It also shows how you're looking against competing advertisers. This can be quite valuable in helping you understand how visible you are to shoppers 
within the marketplace. That wraps up the setup and navigation of Google Merchant Center Next. After you've set up your Google Merchant Center Next account, you need to go and verify your website. I have a full tutorial on how to do this. I'll leave a link to that down below. Also, this video here is actually part of our free Google Shopping course. It shows you everything you need to set up, optimize, and scale your Google Shopping campaigns to over 100K per month. It's completely free and it's on our website. I'll leave a link to that down below. Also, if you're already generating at least 20K per month in sales for your e-commerce store and you wanna to scale to seven figures and beyond, get in touch with my team and I. We help e-commerce stores scale with Google Ads, Facebook Ads, and conversion rate optimizations. We work with dozens of stores every single week. I'll leave a link to our calendar down below. Book a time, let's chat about how we can do it for your store. That's it for this video, guys. Hope that was helpful and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. Make sure to click here for the next video in the free course and I'll see you there.